If you've got knee pain when you're walking, I want you to tune in to this week's video because we're going through three mobility issues that are definitely a cause of knee pain and probably ones that you haven't considered. There are so many websites and so many channels that are telling you all about the proper way to walk, but no one's telling you how to get your body there. Well, that's what we're going to do this week. We're going to go through three mobility issues that may be occurring in your body and they definitely are decreasing your performance and probably causing knee pain, possibly even hip pain. Thank you so much for coming to my channel. For those of you who are new, my name is Marian Barnick. I'm a registered kinesiologist and movement coach. I help you improve your performance and decrease your pain by correcting your biomechanics and your body alignment. And this week we're talking all about walking. We're talking about three mobility issues that you probably haven't considered because you know what? They're in your feet. But hold on. Before you turn away, don't say, oh, I don't have feet problems, Mary, and I don't have an issue with my feet. I don't have an issue with ankle pain or foot pain. I've got knee pain. I've got hip pain. Or I get, you know, tightness in my calves. Well, fear not, because these three mobility issues are definitely linked to walking problems, to knee pain, to hip pain, because again, remember, it's body alignment and it's compensations that occur in the body, and that's what we need to look at. You may have pain in your knee, but it may not be coming from your knee. So it's really important that we go through these three mobility issues, because if these are issues for you, it means your body's not in alignment. Something else has to compensate, and that's where you're getting the pain, you're decreasing the ability for your body to work properly, and you're not going to be able to perform to the level that you want to. Now remember too, walking is a foundation. You may say, you know what, I'm not walking, I'm running, and I'm playing tennis, and I'm out golfing, and I'm way more active than someone who just may be out walking. Well, that's true, you may be, and that's awesome for you. But remember, walking is a foundation of how we move. It's our locomotion. So it's really important to make sure that you set that proper foundation first before you step up, or all you're going to do is see those problems on a larger scale. So stick with me and let's go through these mobility issues because if you solve them in walking, they're not going to be a problem when you're running. So let's get started with mobility issue number one. If you have hip pain, especially if you've got tight hip flexors, this may be caused by a decrease in your ankle mobility for dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. Too often, we start implementing the use of other muscles and other joints to help us move when we can't get that proper positioning of our foot on the ground. So if you can't push off with great plantar flexion in your ankle, you're going to have to compensate for that. Also, if you can't dorsiflex that ankle, you're not going to be able to clear your foot as you go through that swing phase and bring that one foot in front in order to take the next step. So that's where you may be relying on lifting up that hip and bringing that into play, tightening up those hip flexors, and also causing some pain in your low back. So if you've got low back pain, you may be compensating for mobility issue number one, which is a plantar flexion and dorsiflexion in your ankle. Let's move to mobility issue number two. So for mobility issue number two, what I want you to look at is the ability of your ankle to move in the frontal plane. So we are talking about inversion and eversion. Now you're going to say, mm, is that really important? I'm trying to walk forward. I'm not going side to side, but I'm going to caution you on this for sure, because if you have balance issues, then you definitely need to take a look at how the ankle moves in inversion and eversion. If you're playing sports and you are moving with any type of lateral movement, tennis players listen to this, it's important to have that inversion and eversion. I'm going to draw your attention to Djokovic on the baseline, especially on clay, and that sliding movement that you can see and you wonder, oh my goodness, how does his ankle move like that? A, awesome work on flexibility. B, he's got that inversion and eversion working to maximal ability. So we aren't just looking at balance issues when we're talking about elderly adults. We're talking about balance issues for everyone, day to day, whether you're out hiking 
or in your sport. Now there are studies that have been done on balance and looking at how the body works, especially with walking and what may bring about balance problems and falls for some people, but not for others. So when we look at some of the advice that's given by Bob and Brad, I think Bob and Brad, Brad and Bob, those famous PTs, they're giving you some information on four foot walking and I totally disagree with what they're telling you about your position and how to move with that four foot walking they're talking about. Besides the problems in getting your body in proper alignment and having to have postural issues by leaning forward, which is what they're telling you to do when you're walking with that four foot stance, they specifically tell you that you're going to feel like you want to walk faster because of that lean forward. And you know what? That part is true because you're always feeling like you're going to fall. So if you think about when you're going down a really steep hill and you feel like your upper body is maybe going even faster than how your feet can keep up, that's that position because of being out of alignment, because you're in that position where you're leaning forward and it doesn't even matter how much. When you read those studies, and let me quote this specifically to you, stability during walking can be defined as the ability to maintain functional upright gait without falling. Research based, my friends, this is the information when they're testing gait, they're testing falls, and they're testing what's going on with the body. So your gait is vitally important in balance and your mobility issue number two, inversion, eversion, plays right into that. So when they look at elderly people and the falls that may happen, it's because there's an imbalance between the acceleration of the upper body and the lower body and the body's ability to understand the changes in that. So if you're doing as Bob and Brad are telling you, so you're leaning forward and your body feels like it wants to move faster, caution! I would not be doing that because these studies are definitely telling you that this is an issue. So if you're inviting that type of uh, gait and that type of change in your gait to try and compensate for decreased ankle movement, whether it's mobility issue number one with your plantar flexion and your dorsiflexion, or you've got issues with mobility issue number two, inversion, eversion, work on your range of motion for these don't go changing your gait and causing long-term deficits with postural problems, increasing use of your hip flexors, and obviously we're gonna have increased risk of falls if you implement that type of gait modification. That's what I'm basing it on in science and the research, happy to share that with you. Now let's move on to mobility issue number three that I think it's really important for you to check out. So when you look at your lower leg and you look at the tibia coming down into the ankle, sometimes what you'll see is the feet either splayed out to the side, some people call that duck feet, or you can see those toes pointing in. Both of those positions, your feet out and your feet in, that is rotation. Now, generally it's coming from the hips and positioned in that way because of external or internal rotation about the hip joints. But this is so vital in taking care of knee pain, my friends, because when those feet are splayed in that position, you are pulling so much on the muscles that are coming up into the knee and causing so much stress on those knee joints. And no, that's not gonna be corrected by midfoot walking or forefoot walking. Because when you do that, you're actually not fixing your biomechanics. We're talking about better walking mechanics. So I want those feet in neutral positions and that's what we wanna work on. Just by planting your foot on the middle or on the front isn't going to fix anything in that transverse plane. So telling you to do something but not correcting the reasons, I don't think that's good science. I want you to fix why you have your feet out to the side or why your toes are pointing in. Generally speaking, as I said, that's gonna be coming from the hips. So I'm gonna give you a way that you can test whether or not you have rotation and your toes are coming out or they're coming in. So line yourself up against either the area rug, maybe your hardwood floor, and put your foot along that line and see if that is a natural posture for you to hold while you're taking a step forward 
and also while you're taking a step backwards. So you'll see if that plant foot is staying aligned or you feel like your body's really twisting when that happens because it's going to cause issues with your ankle, definitely going to cause knee pain, and your hips are telling you that there's something not aligned properly with how your body's working because what you're seeing when your feet are out or in is a compensation. It's a compensation for your weakness, maybe in your glute meds, it could be an issue with some tightness in the stabilizers in your hip, and that's what we really wanna work on. So as I said, I want you to test that out. Then you can see if you've got that twisting in your body as you move, and that's showing you specifically the compensation. So it doesn't matter what walking style you're trying to adopt, proper walking style, improving your walking style, your body mechanics need to be better in order for you to decrease your pain, walk properly, and improve your performance. Because the whole point is longevity and keeping your body healthy. Because if you have decreased ankle dorsiflexion and plantar flexion, which is our mobility issue number one, you are going to be implementing strategies to try and compensate for that lack of power as you walk. If you've got issues with inversion and eversion, which is the mobility issue number two, you may have problems with balance. You're definitely gonna have issues with sport performance that may have any type of lateral move. And you're going to find that you may be swaying in your hips to try and compensate for the lack of mobility in that ankle. And when you have problems with mobility issue number three, which is that rotation that you'll see with your feet out or your feet in, that's a problem that we're going to move further up the chain and take a look at how that's being affected with our hips first because that may solve the problem right away to make sure you can stabilize your lower limbs in the proper position. Then we can move down to see if you've got some tightness or compensations in that lateral compartment in your lower leg and also if your arch is correct. I want you out and healthy. Movement is key, but it's not just moving, it's moving well. If you've got any questions, post below, send me an email, and also get your name on the wait list for the gait training that's coming up. I haven't opened up the online class yet, but we are taking names on the wait list. It will get you a deal on the class when it comes out, and it's also going to give you a special supplementation to the online class. So if you wanna make sure that you are walking properly, if you want to up level your sport, your game, and your fitness, then get your name on the wait list. Go to marianbarnick.com forward slash gate because I'd love to see you there. I hope everyone has an awesome day. Stays healthy. Bye for now.